So, uh, part two of um, what sort of sword do you need for British swordsmanship? Um, this time we're looking at Scottish stuff. So, the Highland Broadsword Systems of Page um, and uh, McVeigh and Hope's Shearing Sword. So, what about Highland Broadsword of the sort of clan era? So, that's that's really Page as the main text, and there's also a little bit in McVeigh. Um, what sort of swords should we be using for that? Now, Sir so William Hope in 1707 um, wrote that there are three kinds of sword blades, some for thrusting, others again are chiefly for the blow or striking, such as the scimitar, sabre, double-edged highland broadsword. And there is a third sort, which is both for striking and thrusting, such as the broad three-cornered three -cornered blade, the shearing sword with two edges, but not quite, so, not quite so broad as the aforementioned highland broadsword, and the English backsword with a thick back. So I hope there is telling us something that's actually kind of important, and that is that the Highland Broadsword is a different class of weapon to the English backsword. So here I have a typical 17th century English mortuary hilt. Um, this is the Hanway Sharp. It's a, it's a very, very good reproduction of the real thing. I've managed to handle a number of these. Um, and the first thing you notice when you pick these up is they're incredibly light, okay? Barely a kilo very very thin at the top very very fast um, and you can whip them around with your wrist very very quickly um, so this would be the sort of English backsword that Hope would have been familiar with something of this kind of weight and length um, and he says the Highland broadsword is a different beast entirely so here is a reproduction of a Highland broadsword okay you'll notice that it is about the same length, but much, much broader. Um, and because it's much, much broader, even with a very, very thin blade, it is significantly heavier. Okay, this also weighs about one and a half kilos, and that is in no way unreasonable for uh, real weapons of this type. Um, this is a Denelli, by the way. Um, Jake from Canada wanted to know what I thought of this, do a bit of a review. It's gorgeous, is the answer. Now, because it is much heavier than the mortuary hilt, that's important um, in terms of how you wield it, okay? Now, page is not the same as silver. Page is using your conventional English backsword guards inside, outside, hanging and George. But the other unique thing about page is, of course, his emphasis on biomechanics, okay? On both traversing footwork and using what he calls equilibrio, so using the left hand to manipulate the left shoulder, to, which really means you are swinging the sword with your entire body and not just your wrist. And when you pick up one of these, that the reason for that becomes perfectly obvious. I simply can't swing this around with my wrist. It, it's too heavy, it hurts. Okay? I can, of course, use full arm movements, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But, if I want to keep this basket in front of me and take full advantage of this fantastic bit of technology, what I've got to do is fight like Paige suggests. That is, swing the sword not with the wrist, but with my entire body, using the manipulation of the shoulders in coordination with the feet to do that. Um, and the, I've got a video series up on classes I did at the International Sabre Symposium if you want to look more into that. But it's important with a weapon of this weight. Now, I don't need to do that with the mortuary hilt. I don't need to do that with uh, a regulation blade stuck on a basket hilt. You know, so this again weighs about a kilo, and I don't need the full body biomechanics to swing this around. Okay, this is light enough I can just use my wrist, but I cannot do that with a proper Highland broadsword. So, for reproduction of Page's Highland broadsword and clan era stuff, you want something that is much more substantial. Okay. And again, this is a sword that we know cleaved people into on the battlefield, and that's that's what we want to do. Um, now, in terms of length, it's much shorter than silver's perfect length. Okay, get my dagger. Okay, way, way, way shorter, many, many inches. And that is also not atypical for the real things. Okay, a lot of Highland broadswords are not terribly long. Um, why is that? Why would you give up that little bit of extra reach?
The answer is, of course, because most of the time it's wielded in conjunction with something like this. Okay, so the broadsword and taj was the frontline battlefield combination, and most of the techniques that Page describes for the taj end up closing up on the other person and using your taj to bind their weapons away so you can actually get past the great barn door of a thing. Okay, and if you have a sword that's too long, significantly longer than this silver kind of length, it actually gets in the way. Um, and so, just like with 133, you find if your arming sword is too long, you can't get close enough to really do 133 bind and shield knock type techniques. The same thing applies with the broadsword and taj. Okay, so something that is this long, significantly shorter than a silver sword, is probably much more appropriate for doing clan era broadsword like page. The other thing that doing broadsword with an actual broadsword helps to explain is the way that the Highland sources differ from the English sources in terms of where you hold your guards. So Page says you hold your hilt level with your hip, or with the other person's hip specifically. McBain says keep your guard low for fear your adversary cuts under your hilt. Um, Sinclair says keep your wrist on the level of your flank. And McGregor says, quite explicitly, many advise always to keep a straight arm when engaged at backsword, which is very bad advice indeed. I advise broadsword players to keep their arm bent and perfectly easy, by which means they will be enabled to fence double the time they would if they were to do it straight. So, Scottish Highland broadsword sources say, keep your wrist low and your sword tucked in. Do not hold your guards with a straight arm, and it's very simple, you can't do that with this for very long, it's just, it's too heavy, it just gets too tiring to hold it out there, okay, if I hold it in here, nice and tucked in, with the hilt nice and low, I can swing this around forever, as soon as I straighten the arm, I've got to hold up a kilo or a half of metal on the end of my wrist, and that's just not feasible for very long. Um, so it explains a lot about the system if you have a sword that is of appropriate weight. One of the other sorts of swords that Hope mentions in there is the shearing sword. Now, uh, in an article that is on the blog section of the Staccato website, I put up um, beginning of last year, I think, um, I argue that the Scottish shearing sword was in fact what we today would call a Walloon sword. So it's a fairly light cut and thrust blade, um, sharp on both edges, a semi baskety hilt around there, um, a lot less substantial than the Highland version obviously, which is part of what helps to keep it light. The most important thing about it is it comes with a thumb ring, and with the thumb ring I get much better point control, so very 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 popular among small sword people such as McBain and Hope, plus I get to do the false edge reversals that you can do with the Italian finger over, um, I get the same second point of leverage there, so I've got this false edge and parries that I can make from low guards um, without it interfering with the nice Molinaise that I can do with a hammer grip. Um, so I personally prefer thumb rings to fingering the quillen. Um, so if you want to do Shearing sword or spadroon, according to McBain, obviously you want a shearing sword like this. Now, Hope claims that his system is suitable for small sword and shearing sword and back sword. And I think that is perfectly legitimate. You can do Hope's new method with one of these and it has access to cuts, um, but the sword is not so heavy that any of Hope's stuff becomes in any way strenuous. You can't do hope with a broadsword. A proper Highland broadsword is a different beast indeed. This is just too heavy. There's no way I can do Hope's new method with a proper broadsword. So he's talking about a very, very light cut and thrust sword. If you want to adapt hope to back sword, um, you're going to want that sort of light sword. And having that thumb ring inside the shearing sword um, certainly helps with that.